All right, so now let's complete the functionality. And as a quick side note, during this video, at least, I will rely heavily on filter method. And if you want to find out more info, you can just follow this URL where I cover everything in great detail. So let's navigate back to our example. And essentially, I want to set up two functions. One is going to be for removing all the items and the second one is going to be for removing a single item. So let's start with that one. So remove item. For now, I'm not going to pass anything in, even though eventually, yes, we'll pass in the parameter. And I mean, if you want, you can set up the log, but I think in order to speed this up, I'll just copy and paste. And I'll say, clear all items. So that's my second function. Then we want to set up two buttons. So we want to set up a button right here in a div. And also, we want to set up a button that clears all the values. And that one is going to be outside of the curlies, since I'm not going to set it in the list. So first, I guess, let's just start with some HTML elements, I'm going to go with button type, that is going to be equal to a button, I'm not going to add any classes, it's going to be pretty basic. We can nicely see the buttons and now let's also set up that clear all. So let's go here button, same deal type is equal to a button. Then let's add a little bit of styles, just because I want a margin. So I'm going to go with margin top and that is equal to two REMs. On click is coming up. And now let's go with clear items. And now let's go back to our tasks. So essentially, this one, and as I know, I actually need to add here class name, and then that is equal to a BTN. So this one, we want to use to remove all the items, correct? So what do we need to do? Well, we have people and set people. Currently, it's equal to what to our data array, how we can remove all items? Well, we can set people equal to an empty array by just using set people. So if I go with clear all items, and I say set people, and set it equal to an empty array, I'll remove automatically all the items. And since we're updating the state value, we will trigger what we will trigger re render. And of course, as a result, we'll see the latest changes in the browser. So let's go over here, let's say on click, that's the event. And now we just want to pass the reference. So let's say clear all um, items. Let's save that. Let's test it out. Yep, we remove all the items from the list. Now, just so we are aware, remember, we can pass here the arrow function as well. So just for your reference, we can do it this way, we can go with arrow function, and then set people invoke and pass in the value. Again, this is very, very important concept. And yes, I'm getting quite a few questions in the course Q a both of them achieve the same result. So keep in mind, if you see this code, essentially, it's just a shorter version of this one. And as far as the remove item, well, let's think about it. So we have IDs, correct? So those are unique to each item. Now how we can remove a specific item from array? Well, we can use a filter method, where I'm going to grab the ID, whatever it is, one, two, three, four, and essentially, we'll just remove that one item whose ID matches. And then we'll set the people equal to that new array. So let's try this one out. First, again, I just want to emphasize the point that each item will right away have that unique value when it invokes the remove item. So let's say here, I'm going to go with ID parameter and log an ID. And if I go back to the div that I'm returning, notice over here, if I go with on click, and first of all, if I want to invoke remove item right away, I do need to set up the arrow function first. And I'm not going to go back to this topic. We literally spent like I believe three videos on that in the fundamentals. So if 
you are a little bit confused, please go back and rewatch those videos. So remove item, I'll pass in the ID, and you'll see nicely once you click on remove that each item basically has that unique ID. So whatever we'll pass over here is going to be unique to that item. So like I said, what can we do? Well, we can create new array, so const new people. That is equal to what? Well, filter returns a new array, right? So we go with state value, then we go here with filter, and then we need to pass in the callback function. Now in a callback function, I'll reference each item as a person, and I'll say, if the person ID does not match, then return. Basically, filter is looking for a flag. And if it matches, then it's going to return. In this case, if the ID doesn't match, then it's going to return that person to a new people. If it does match, then essentially it's going to exclude it. So we go here with set people and we set it equal to a new people. That's it. That's all we have to do. Let's comment this one out and notice how one by one, basically, we can remove the items from the array. And if you're wondering, can we pass this entire logic directly in set people? The answer is yes. So you can also do something like this. Grab this line, don't set up the variable, and right away pass in the functionality. Remember, this returns a new array at the end of the day. So yes, this will also work. Notice I can nicely remove John. So that's how we can set up a state value as an array and right away make it dynamic by just adding a few buttons as well as the functionality. And as you can see, we are basically relying on all the concepts we cover in fundamentals. The difference, well, now we're using this one line of code. We're basically using the use state, which allows us to change that value. And every time we change the value, we trigger what? We trigger re-render. And as a result, we see the latest changes in the browser.